Are all the circumstances precluding wrongfulness applicable with respect to violations of IHL? There is no particular problem regarding circumstances such as force majeure. That circumstance is clearly relevant regarding IHL. For example, the collapse of the judicial institutions of a state due to an armed conflict may amount to a force majeure with respect to the obligation to search for and prosecute suspects of the serious IHL violations listed in the four Geneva Conventions and Additional Protocol 1 and qualified as the grave breaches. We'll come back to that notion later. Consent as another circumstance precluding wrongfulness does not raise any real issue either. It may also be invoked by states to justify IHL violations. IHL nonetheless limits the scope of application of that circumstance. According to the Geneva Conventions and Additional Protocol 1, states' party cannot exonerate any other party from their responsibility arising from the said grave breaches. However, the relevance of the other circumstances precluding wrongfulness is more questionable. Firstly, regarding distress, armed conflicts are necessarily situations in which persons, in particular combatants, are in situations of distress. Thus, if we admit the application of that circumstance with respect to IHL, states could easily rely on that circumstance to disregard IHL. That's why distress as a circumstance precluding wrongfulness should apply in very restrictive conditions and can never be invoked, for example, to justify the killing of civilians. We should nonetheless note that the Ethiopia Eritrea Claim Commission admitted the invocation of distress in order to justify the, viol the violation of the IHL prohibition to forced transfer and deportation of the civilian population enshrined in Article 49 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. In that case, Eritrea indeed justified the deportation of the population from a border city into camps located in the Eritrean territory by arguing that the population was threatened by artillery fire from Ethiopia. Secondly, regarding necessity, Again, it is doubtful that such a circumstance may fully apply with respect to IHL violations. As we have seen, IHL is the result of a delicate tension between the principle of humanity and the principle of military necessity. In addition, many IHL prohibitions contain exceptions based on military necessity. If we admit that necessity may be invoked to justify IHL violations, this may strongly distort the equilibrium carefully reached by IHL rules and push the balance excessively in favor of military necessity. That being said, the International Court of Justice does not seem to reject the idea that necessity could act as a circumstance precluding wrongfulness resulting from IHL violations. In the case concerning the legality of the wall built in the Palestinian occupied territories, the court ruled out the argument made by Israel that the building of the wall and the ensuing alleged IHL violations were justified on the basis of necessity, in particular the necessity to protect Israel from terrorist attacks. The court dismissed the argument, but not because it was in itself inapplicable with respect to IHL violations, but merely because the conditions for its application, that case, were not fulfilled. In particular, that the building of the wall and the ensuing IHL violations were not the only solution for Israel to safeguard an essential interest against a grave and imminent peril. While some doubt remains, on the relevance of distress and necessity as circumstances precluding wrongfulness with respect to IHL, it seems clear that both countermeasures and self-defense can never serve 
as a justification for violations of ICHA. Firstly, the International Commission expressly indicated that the term countermeasures covers that part of the subject of reprisals not associated with armed conflict. Secondly, with regard to self-defense, the principle of separation between jus in bello and jus ad bellum that we examine in chapter 1 means that self-defense cannot be a relevant circumstance precluding wrongfulness with respect to IHL violations. Finally, we must remember that no circumstances precluding wrongfulness can be invoked to justify the violations of a peremptory norm. As we have seen from the work of the International Commission on State Responsibility, peremptory norms, at least, seems to include the cardinal principles of IHL and the prohibition on reprisals.